In today's video, I'm going to share with you 14 household items that you can use in sewing. Hi, my name is Matilda and welcome back to Miss Matti, this channel where I share all about sewing, knitting, mending and generally how to live an awesome and sustainable life. If that sounds like something for you, please consider hitting the subscribe button and hit the notification bell so you will not miss any new upcoming videos from me. In today's video, I'm going to share with you 14 household items that you can use in sewing. I already made a video on seven sewing tools that I think you should make instead of buying. And if you haven't checked that video out, I highly recommend you to do so after this video because don't we all love saving some money when it comes to sewing? And I also do not really like having too many items in general, especially speciality gadgets that I barely ever use and therefore I really like when normal household items that you may have at home already also can be used in your sewing. Let's get into the 14 household items that you can use in your sewing. Number one. Do you have these big thread spools? You know, normally we use them for our overlockers but you might want to use this for your normal sewing machine and you might not have one of these here, you know, a thread stand. And if you do not have one of these thread stands, do not worry, I will shortly share a little hack I actually learned recently when I was watching a video from your homegirl here on YouTube. It was a video where she was altering all her clothes that needed altering. And I will link that video down in the description box down below if you want to check that video out. So the trick she used is using a plastic reusable straw, put your thread spool on like this and then use a ball. So it looks like this. And that actually allows it to roll pretty freely without creating a complete mess. I thought it was super nifty and I really wanted to share this as my number one tip for you all. Let me know by the way in a comment down below, have you tried this hack? I was like mind blown when I saw that one. I was like, how have I never thought about this? Number two, makeup brushes or paint brushes to clean your sewing machine with. You can also use toothbrushes, although I find these way better to clean specifically my sewing machines, but I use the toothbrush to clean my knitting machine and that works really really well. So yeah, that's pretty self-explanatory. I just find that, you know, reusing what you already have is always a good move when it comes to saving money, being more sustainable and so on. Number three is freezer paper for freezing paper applique. I thought I had freezer paper at home, but turns out I only had wax paper. I do not know what to use wax paper for in sewing. I'm sure there are some tricks out there. So if you know, let me know in a comment down below. If you are a quilter, you already know about freezer paper applique, but if you're not a quilter, you might not have heard about it. And I will link to a tutorial down below in the description box if you want to find out how to do it. I find that applique is such a good sustainable sewing hack because you make sure to use up materials that you already have, scraps, you can even upcycle materials. And then it's such a great mending hack too. If you have a hole that didn't really look that great when you darned it, or if you have a stain that you cannot remove, applique can be a really fun way to cover that up. Number four, washable glue stick. Not only is it great for pattern alterations, this is like one of my essential pattern cutting tools, but I recently learned that this is a brilliant mending tool as well. For example, holding down frayed pieces of fabric, glue a patch that you want to stitch in place and so on instead of using pins. And specifically, I think it would be really helpful if you do something like canter stitching. I actually have a tutorial already on my channel on how to do that. So it would have really helped me when I did my canter stitching to use this method because I felt like I was pricking myself with pins all the time 
So this is definitely a trick that I'm gonna start using more often. Of course, make sure that the glue stick you use actually is washable. This one washes off really well, but not all of them do. So that's something to really bear in mind when you use this method. Number five, binder clips instead of wonder clips. I do not have wonder clips yet. They look really good, uh, specifically for sewing fabrics that you cannot pin. They're very popular amongst quilters specifically, which makes total sense because those products are pretty thick and the wonder clips seem really good to use for binding quilts, for example. But, you know, I'm trying to hold off buying things that I might or might not use. So the few times I have needed wonder clips, I actually have used binder clips instead. For example, when I was making these rolls for my knitting needles and my crochet hooks, I used binder clips to hold the binding in place while I was stitching it together. Number six, safety pins. This might be a really obvious one for most of us, Specifically, we use it often to draw a drawstring through a waistband or an elastic or similar. But I have learned a few other tricks. One trick is to thread buttons onto these to keep the buttons organized. That can be really helpful, specifically when you're working on a project and you want to make sure you do not lose the buttons for that project. But another thing I have learned recently is that safety pins are actually really good to conquer a static cling which is really helpful when the winter comes and everything wants to stick together so if that happens to you grab a safety pin put it near the fabric and metal will sort of work against the static electricity. I do not know if that is the correct scientific term for it. Let me know, scientists, in the comment down below. But it works, and that's the key. Number seven, darning mushroom substitutes. Well, okay, I get it. Well, not all of your knitters are sock darners, but if you ever need to darn socks or other items where you would maybe need a darning mushroom, but you do not have one. Then I have actually a list of items that um, I actually think you can use in place of a darning mushroom. Like, I mean, I love my darning mushroom, but this is not something you need unless you darn a lot of socks. Some of the items that you can use instead is a light bulb, a tennis ball, orange, baseball bat. And I also saw someone who used a little solar lamp on Instagram for darning socks. And I thought that was really fun. So you can just look around in your home. Do you have anything that is shaped similar to a sock heel? Well, use that instead. And if you're interested in learning about darning, I have several videos on the subject. So I will link to that playlist down in the description box down below. Number eight, tweezers. These are a really great tool if you have an overlocker, you already have a tweezer with that machine, but you can use this for your normal sewing machine as well. This is not the one that came with my overlocker, this is just a normal tweezer, but it's really great for threading the machine as well as pulling out threads that you really cannot grab. And I wouldn't be surprised if there are other uses for tweezers when it comes to sewing, if you know any. You know what to do, let us all know in a comment down below. Number nine, masking tape or painter's tape. So what I mainly use this for is things like marking out a seam allowance on my sewing machine that I might not have already marked out. Or if I need some help with making really straight stitches, for example, if I'm top stitching and if I need some extra guidance in making very straight stitches, I love using painter's tape or masking tape as well. Another thing that I find it very helpful for is to mark out which one is the right or the wrong side of your fabric. And if I have a fabric like corduroy or velvet, I like to just Put a piece of masking tape or painter's tape and then draw an arrow in the direction that the nap goes. Number 10, chopsticks. These are the perfect point turners in my opinion. I would not 
anytime soon go and buy a point turner. Maybe there are reasons to buy point turners, I do not know. But so far I found that a chopstick does the job really well. Just make sure that you use a smooth one and not one of those rough single-use ones. Not all the single-use chopsticks are rough in the surface. Some of them, like this one here, is pretty smooth and fine and perfect to use as a point turner, but you probably know which ones I'm talking about. Also, chopsticks are probably one of the most versatile items in my home. I mean, I use the disposable ones for like a lot of things plants, stirring paint, and then chopsticks in cooking is a no-brainer. Number 11. Swedish butter knives instead of a hero marker. Some of you might or might not have a Swedish butter knife at home. I love these ones. I mean, I'm grown up with them. And if you want to get one, IKEA will sort you out. Anyway, I recently found out that you could use these in place of a hero marker because these can actually create the same lines as the hero marker does, as well as help when you create folds with your hero marker. The only thing it doesn't have is this pointy edge here that the hero marker has, but for most hero marker usages, this pretty much does the job. And sadly, I found this out after I got one of these, but at the same time, I'm pretty pleased with this one as well, so yeah. It is what it is. Number 12. Rolled up towel in place of a tailor sausage. So if you do not have a tailor sausage, do not worry, you can just roll up a towel, stick it in the sleeve and press. Towels can also be used as substitute ironing board. I did that for a pretty long time, as some of you might know. And also, I learned a little trick if you do need to press something like corduroy or velvet, put a fluffy towel on top as uh, your, um, what do you call it, pressing cloth, and then press very, very lightly because, as you know, you shouldn't press generally velvet or corduroy. But if you do have to press it, like for example, opening a seam. Put a towel on, make sure it's very fluffy and if you have a dryer, put it in the dryer for a bit and if it flattens out, throw it back in the dryer, fluff it up and continue to press. Just make sure that you press very, very lightly, even with this towel, because we do not want to crush that velvet or corduroy. But it's a little trick that I found really nifty if you do need to press it. Number 14, double pointed knitting needle. Okay, that might not be a household item unless you are a knitter like me, but I find it such a nifty tool to use. I use this to poke a hole at the end of my darts in my patterns, for example. So I just can go through there with my marking tool and make sure that the dart is marked correctly. Another thing that I use this double pointed knitting needle for is to poke a hole in fabrics if I wanted for example attach a stud or an eyelet or jean buttons. I have a tutorial on how to attach jean buttons by the way and if you've seen that video you have already seen me poke a hole with a double pointed knitting needle through the fabric. So that was all the 14 household items that you may already have at home that you can use in your sewing. Let us all know in a comment down below if you used any of these household items in your sewing and also let us all know if you know of any other household items that you can use in your sewing. Let us all share the knowledge in the comments down below. I would love to hear from you. And if you like this video, you most likely will like these videos over here. And until next time, bye.